Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of the management of JMJ College for Women, Tenali, I am Arunashyata Karra, lecturer in physical education. Welcome you all for this one day international webinar on fitness through yoga during COVID-19 pandemic as a webinar convener. Let us commence our webinar with a prayer song, Seeking God's Divine Presence. to mute your audio and video for the smooth functioning of the webinar. I cordially welcome Dr. Sister Teresa Magade, correspondent of our college, Dr. Sister Shiny KP, our principal, and today's eminent speakers, Professor K. Jyoti Dayanandan, Chennai, and Mr. Sesh Gonella, USA, and all the participants across the country and from other places like USA, Canada, Australia, for the international webinar organized by the Department of Physical Education, JMJ College for Women, Tenali. Prior to present a brief note on the importance of the webinar, I heartily thank Almighty for protect, protecting us in this Corona time. I'm happy that we are alive with sound health. Yoga is a group of physical, mental, and spiritual practices or disciplines which originated in ancient India. It is one of the six Astika schools of Hindu philosophical traditions. It is an exercise consisting largely of the poaches or asanas. Yoga gurus from India introduced yoga to the West following the success of Swami Vivekananda in the late 19th and early 20th century, which his adaptation of yoga tradition, excluding asanas. Outside India, it has developed into posture-based physical fitness, stress relief, and relaxation technique. Yoga in India traditions, however, is more than physical exercise. It has a meditative and spiritual core a discipline method for attaining a goal. Hence, on this auspicious day, here we have our esteemed guests, Dr. K. Jyoti and Mr. Sesh Gonella to share their views in detail. Now, I cordially invite Dr. Sister Shiny KP, the principal of our college, to give her welcome remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm in the one day international webinar and faculty development program on fitness through yoga during COVID-19 pandemic. It's my honor to welcome our prominent speakers, Professor K. Jodi, Associate Professor of YMCA College of Physical Education, Chennai, and Mr. Sesh Ganela the Executive Director of Healthcare Technology Strategy, NASCO LLC USA. We are going to have very interesting sessions on the importance of yoga in times of 
COVID-19. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought to for many issues that range from the economic to the social. Experts have noted that in times of anxiety and stress, yoga is one of the most effective ways to maintain a steady state of mind. Doctors have stressed that along with the physical well-being, mental peace and positivity too are important factors in the fight against the pandemic. And yoga helps to ensure peace and serenity. Yoga can work at three levels. Firstly, it can significantly boost immunity. And secondly, we can avoid depression. And thirdly, yoga helps the global community to set the new goals for itself. So we can come out stronger and brighter from this novel coronavirus. So I would like to personally thank Professor K. Jodi and Mr. Sesh Gornela for making it convenient to share the knowledge and experience with us today. I congratulate Ms. K. Arnasujada, the convener of the international webinar, and Dr. C. H. Sarojini for their efforts to organize this faculty development program today. I implore God's blessings to have very interactive and steering sessions. Wish you all the best. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, sister, for extending your greetings and appreciation. Honorable delegates, dear participants, a warm welcome to you on behalf of our principal, Dr. Sister Shiny KP, and all the staff of JMJ College for Women, Tenali. It deemed as a great privilege to introduce our professor who molds the students in a dignified manner to attain respectable position. She is none other than Dr. Jyoti, Associate Professor of YMCA College of Physical Education, Chennai. She has 28 years of experience as Director of Physical Education at YMCA. Before that, she served in different capacities as fitness expert come supervisor at Taj Mahal Hotel, New Delhi, as a lecturer in Sri Padmavati Mahila University and director of physical education and sports science at Pondicherry. She has published 72 papers in national level and 38 in international level and presented 57 papers in different seminars. Under her enthusiastic guidance, 17 PhDs and 97 MPhils were awarded in a manner. She had written seven books and re received seven awards from different corners. I'm very grateful to her as she works tremendously on women-related problems. Dear ma'am, I'm extremely blessed to introduce you as a great personality to all, to all of our participants. Hearty welcome, ma'am. Ma'am, we are glad to invite to take over the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May I now? Can you share my slides? Yes, yes ma'am. On my very outset, I would like to thank the management, the principal of JMG College, the organizing secretary. In particular, I would like to thank Dr. Sarojini, Dr. Shaini, Dr. Mrs. Aruna Sujata, and I uh, would like to, on my personal behalf, welcome all the participants on this auspicious talk that I'm going to give today. Well, uh, I just gave a concurrence to the uh, JMJ College management stating, I would just deal with the topic science behind yoga. So now that uh, the pandemic is coming, I'm not going to touch more upon the pandemic and the symptoms and the uh, coronavirus and all that. And that the topic that I would it be going is, it is only to motivate people to do yoga and how, what are, what is the science behind it and how are we going to move on it? Right. So the screen appears to be blank in front of you. So I would request you all to kindly rub your hand. As you rub your hand, you can feel the warmness. You just feel the warmness, right? So this warmness has to be felt by you and just place it on your face, eyes, and just take it back and come to the namaskar position. Well, 
so rubbing your hand can always you know whenever we are in fear we are uh, uh, we are in doubts we don't have anybody to support the only thing that we take is we take this namaskar mudra so this namaskar mudra will vibrate the energy within our hands and would develop and create more energy confidence in an individual so this this, this is one of the best mudra that basically indians follow wherever we go and it is a form where you can greet and corona will also not affect anybody by pleasing them greeting them admitting them everything goes with this and this is one of the best mudra that you can ever attain to boost your energy now so or you can also boost your ears you can pull your ear lobes we have got uh, the lymphatic nodes here which creates an active uh, role in not allowing corona virus also to attack us the moment you feel that something is there stuck in your you know throat you can have hot water you can have hot water in between whenever you go out and come these are few things which all of us know so i'm not going to touch upon anything as such right so now uh, when we look at the next slide what it does is it speaks about the fact what we need to do is so how many of us are going to be alive in coming days only god knows so whatever time is left with us is a precious and we are in heaven whatever single day that we are spending today is in heaven day that is what we need to do so the best happiness is being uh, what we can do is we need to be very useful if we are of use to somebody now uh, if you can help somebody you feel very happy when you go in the night to the bed you feel yourself that you have done help somebody so that's the best satisfaction that it comes that comes our duty and children are the people who keep guiding us dad you don't go out mom you don't go out you wear this you do this you do that so we do need to respect our children also the greatest power is faith have faith in god we all can fight corona and definitely this pandemic all over the world will literally vanish in short period of time so it is like a balloon which will vanish so the most dangerous people we see basically are liars do never get angry be loveful communicate with people get in touch with everybody the greatest disaster that we are meeting today is death only the family who is undergoing this kind of disaster only they know the mystery what it is the worst thing is to give up fight against the corona you know you have to be very active even when you get corona and you are running with temperature and all your body is aching and somebody is advising you your body is been dragged towards the bed don't go to the bed you, the more active you are the corona will get away from you and this is one of the uh, uh, i mean uh, anecdotes which is said by one of the italian person of uh, known to me said okay so you have to be active the more active you are the corona will go within another, uh, within 3 days and you can survive and have faith and get on with it and purpose of life is realization all those some of the people have gone through corona and have come back that means now you know the importance of life and now the realization period starts coming in you now now uh, what we can do is now when you look at yoga people think that doing yoga is something very difficult why people say that you have to go to himalayas and only practice that why why is that so they there is a two extreme version which goes with yoga one is it is too easy another say is it is too difficult but what i would rather say is is neither too difficult nor complex it is neither simple only thing you need to know the true form of yoga what is the science behind yoga if somebody everybody of us all those who are attending if we know what is the science then we will realize and we will taste we taste sometimes god yes in the same manner we need to taste yoga how perfect it is and it is one of the best way that the world is fighting against corona through practicing yoga so what is the science now let us take that uh, in this world material pleasure cannot give anything the more you want diamond you keep grasping diamond you have one house you go for another house you have a small car you want a bigger car if you have one you go for so there is no satisfaction we never get satisfied there is no limit for our expectation and desires to be fulfilled so continue doing your duties without expectation today if i am doing this class i'm not doing with any expectation it is only that i'm trying to do as a duty as a teacher i'm trying to uh, uh, impart the knowledge so 
this is how it has to go you need to continue to do your duty without any expectation if every individual without criticizing the government without criticizing the institution without criticizing the parents or the neighbor if we all of us go with it you know i think they are doing going doing the great service to the world and that is how we are going to also fight against corona just talking about the government this government that government this central government state government cor corporation nothing is going to fetch so such impartial attitude towards our duty is only called as yoga even when you look at if a mother is preparing at home some food she is doing her duty if father is trying to do something he is doing so every individual should do their duty and it goes this way now let us compare yoga in a form of highway it is a highway for happiness and prosperity just think we are going on a road all of you imagine yourself that you are moving on a road right let that you you are driving now with me so let us go together and then keep listening to me also at the same time now the uh, the control of the universal energy you know is atma so if you take into the meaning of yoga yoga means union or to join so the definition say the chitta vritti nirodha that means controlling the wandering mind so whenever uh, we look at the our eyes are open we try to see whatever comes in front of us even if a crow a man or something whatsoever comes so we are trying to control our wandering minds even if we close our eyes and sit for a while it goes somewhere 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 and keeps flying so yoga is something which controls that is where we need to have that we are touching the heavens so let me compare that as a controller of the universal energy that is atma when it is joined with parmatma that is the self so let if parmatma is the ocean okay our body and atma is a drop of water kept separate in a container that is our body so when these two are united atma and parmatma are joined together that you lose your identity i am i me i you know that identity goes off and it comes to oneness so this is the world that we are looking for where we are, we need to have that one to not have the pride that i am professor i am associate professor i am so and so i am the director all these things are only temporary at last when we go to the graveyard we all go as a dead body and not as anything else so we have to keep that as in our mind right now when you uh, look at this yoga is a science of personality development a person who does yoga when you look at their body it looks very flexible they are not stiff they are not fragile they are not very masculine they they have a beautiful pleasing body with the balanced muscles in them it gives them the good physical condition to bear with the environmental change if it is hot it makes a body cool you feel better you don't sweat if it is too cold makes a body to uh, transfer our energy and the metabolism takes place to take keep the body temperature to the fine and it gives a mental control you know at the adverse time we come across how are we are uh, is our eq very perfect the emotional continent is how good it is are we able to manage the uh, situation so that is where the mental control comes and then emotional balance also leads to intellectual development the one who is very angry say for example a person is drunkard you know you see the behavior they will not have a good condition they will not have mental control they will not have emotional balance they will not even act intelligently their attitude will be totally silly so a yoga a person who does yoga it develops the overall personality of an individual now when you see into this Uh, why do we need to do yoga what is that which is so there are few uh, points in our body which is kept in the spine it is an imaginary point which is there in the spine where we call it as kundalini shakti so if you say for example you are going for uh, uh, halasana it stretches your spine that means you are activating the chakras it goes that way so uh, when you get on to any form of yogic practice like uh, yama niyama pranayama asana pratyahara dharana dhyana any way can lead to kundalini shakti and it evokes that if you see patanjali how many of you have take seen the photograph of a uh, statue of patanjali the great father of uh, yoga you see there's a snake which winds the person and uh, the snake takes on top of the head this up from head comes on top 
so even if you see the medical signs, the symbol which is given by medical representatives, the symbol of doctors, you know, it is wind with two snakes. Why? Why means they get the power of a snake, the power. What is the power in snake? The snake can have a better sensation at the long distance, you know, they can make out what, what it is. So that kind of uh, sensational power we get basically by doing yoga. You touch upon the Kundalini Shakti, where you touch, start from the Muladhara Chakra, then you get into Swadhina Chakra, Manipura Chakra, Ahara, the Love Chakra, the Aham, the Vishuddhi Chakra, the voice which comes out, and then Ajuna Chakra, your uh, power on the forehead. This is where it is being covered with Bindi because maximum of your power comes goes out of it. Okay, and then comes the Sahastara Chakra. You attain so much of power beyond your head and it takes you. That is where you look upon and that is where we need to get on. So yoga can help you to get on to this. And if you see our body is full of nadis, whatever you say, it is a science. There are pressure points which is kept here. You can see the number of points, you know, each hand, sometimes people will say to get the immunity, you need to press upon this part of the body. You need to press this, you need to press this, you have to pull the load. So there are so many pressure points which comes with it and we touch upon the nadis. And basically out of this thousand nadis, the three nadis, that is England nadi, pingla nadi and the sukshma nadi. So right side, left side and the center. So these are the three basically uh, basic nadis which gets activated and through pranayama, you can evoke these uh, uh, nadis. So you need to cleanse the nadis every day in the morning and by doing that corona will definitely not work. It increases your lung capacity and it fights against the corona and you get the ability to uh, heal faster if you, you get through. Right. Now in this world if you see everything is existing even atom exists as a form of energy. Our body is also in a form of energy. So everywhere it is energy. Today I'm alive. You can make see me alive. Why? Because the prana, the prana is moving in my body. The moment I stop breathing, that means I am dead. So this is what it goes with it. Thus the human body is nothing but the flow of energy. The energy goes. If this energy goes very high, that is uh, too much of energy, it leads to hypertension and too much of energy leads to uh, in the wrong place, in the wrong place. That is what is called. So yoga can help you to control all your hypertensions and uh, etc. from the body. Now, when you see, as I said, you all are driving. Now you compare yourself that one of your car is on this uh, street. You can see this road, beautiful highway is there. When the highways are moving, the city is happy. Each one of us are happy, 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 and we are moving. The moment you see the 90th car and the 53rd car is bottlenecked, so we tempers, we can wait for five minutes, 10 minutes, half an hour, one, and everybody starts getting flared up and then temperament goes high. We become late, the road gets raged and the city is totally unhappy. And when we go to the office or wherever it is, you know, we, we, we are found late. So only method that we can do is you need to perform little asanas that can help you to get on. So uh, basically yoga helps to unblock the highway that is our body. That means if I have a block in uh, this part or this part or in my any of my veins, there is a blockage or there is a, a particular hormone which is not being secreted. So all these things are called as blocks in the body. So uh, through yogic practice, you can it can help you to unblock the basically the highways or the nadis and move energy making the city or body happy. So through yogic practice, these blocks can be cleared, your hormonal balance can be done, the, uh, I mean the cholesterol uh, that is being blocked here and there in your veins and arteries, you know, that can be pushed off through yogic practice and help secrete the happy hormone, the love hormones, you know, the body feels very happy when the uh, happy hormones come. When does it come? Uh, one is excretion, when the body is uh, trying to throw out all the toxins. Through yogic practice, you can remove the toxins from the body. While taking bath, you can remove the toxin from the body. While flushing, uh, I mean, while you're going for your uh, one bathroom or two bathroom, you see after that is released from the body, you'll feel very, very, very happy and lighter. So when this goes, 
the love hormones after the yogic practice the love hormones increases i'll show you in my next slide how oxytocin serotonin dopamine these are all the few happy hormones which are being basically secreted it helps decrease the stress hormones that is what we know so if somebody is admitted we are stressed here why are you stressed when somebody is in the hospital somebody is uh, uh, i mean uh, there in icu or whatever it is nothing is going to uh, change you know uh, unless uh, unless you you know um, try to practice yourself with some kind of stress releasing method of yogic practice can help you so you have to keep breathing and breathe out breathe in and breathe out and your stress can be removed and no way sitting here and getting stressed you know you can uh, give uh, i mean change the person who is in the icu the person has to undergo the treatment accordingly right so uh, through yogic practice you can improve the breathing and oxygenate the body in a beautiful manner by doing pranayama right so when you look into the research there are not much researches are been uploaded actually if you see indian scenario they have done so many lakhs of researches have been done but not all researchers have tried to upload their um, uh, studies on the internet but still there are more than 1000 studies that you can google and then identify which clearly speaks about the uh, reduction in the blood pressure decrease in the stress related outcomes pain management and i'll tell you one thing there's a way we had a mayor in a, in a city so there were five people who met with an accident and this mayor was the one who started practicing yogic uh, asanas and pranayama and believe he was more wounded than anybody else whereas he healed much more faster because he practiced yoga so this is how we can even in the delivery ward uh, i basically deal more with the pregnancy and women and we give them some kind of pranayama which helps them to cope up with the pain during the labor so that breathing can divert you from the pain and it can decrease the pain bearing ability uh, in your body so pain management takes place with this it reduces the disease symptoms say somebody is attacked with some disease they can cope up say i i have seen some people with thyroid and then uh, uh, other diseases health related diseases and what i find is there is a decrease or reduced symptoms of that particular disease they can go with the normal way without depending upon say insulin unit high in unit or they need not depend upon hypertension tablets or whatever it is so this is how yoga can help you to reduce the disease symptoms and some of the uh, basically you know could be heredity or could be health related diseases like uh, cancer diabetes the uh, carpal tunnel syndromes then osteoarthritis all these can be pushed off you can manage them you can manage them and all those who are mother or parent or somebody had have had cancer those people can should need to be definitely double alert to keep away from cancer because yoga can help them to keep them away and the, the moment you get the symptoms try to do certain kinds of asanas and keep your body slim by not taking uh, too much of food you know there are many things which has to which acts upon it right along with yogic uh, practice even the diet works on with it so i'll speak to you in my later slide so uh, you can also see the benefits and the outcomes of doing yoga is cardio respiratory so heart cardiac is heart respiratory is lungs cardio respiratory so you unite two organs in that again musculoskeletal muscle and the skeletal so what happens is the muscle volume increases there is a hypertrophy uh, of the muscle takes place and the ligament that attaches muscle with the bone gets strengthened better the there is flexibility which goes with it and then psychobiological what a thing you know you go with your emotions your mind and your body fear fear of getting corona fear of getting this disease or that you know that can totally be pushed off if you uh, you are been adhering to a regular yogic practice you don't have to be afraid of this pandemic at all and then your digestive system it goes very fine if you are more with the non veg your metabolic uh, you know your body gets very stressed very tired you you are not able to flush your uh, or not going to pass your fascia not trying to clean your bowel then again it leads to certain problem and which could lead also to the 
colon cancer and other problems so through yogic practice you can see that everybody's metabolic rate increases uh, and you can digest the food with very very easily now uh, you can also see there is a, um, a, a perfect equilibrium and the harmony between in the body and the mind you know what you are appear what you appear to be that is what you act to be right and then it promotes self healing if somebody gets attacked of corona also no problem you can keep doing your pranayama have a particular diet which can promote self healing okay and there are studies which has also spoken about the placebo uh, effect uh, of uh, you know people even without corona and with corona they we did a small research and we identified that uh, both the people did not get into corona and normal people could heal much more faster so so self healing takes place it removes the negative blocks from the mind and toxins from the body well, toxin is only through because when we inhale we inhale 5 liters and when we air, of air when we exhale we have the thresh oh, i mean the um, uh, try to hold 250 to 500 ml of air in the lungs itself that means the whole of the toxin uh, or the uh, non oxygenated air is not pushed off from the body so by taking long exhalation you try to push off unwanted air and then again you inhale the fresh oxygenated air inside and it this is how it gets on it enhances the personal power the self awareness the consciousness stress tension all these can be removed now you could see the benefits again it improves your brain functions children basically need to you can not only we people you know we also need to motivate the children at home the elder people at home it improves the brain function you can act accordingly it uh, also alters the gene expression it increases the flexibility if the, the more flexibility you have the more longevity of the life it also reduces your blood pressure improves the, your lung capacity what else you want your lungs can blow you know it can blow much more harder you can push your thoracic region and can inhale and then uh, you can feel your know, the balloon like thing you know trying to inhale so much of air in the body and you feel so fresh and the blocks and the irritation in the throat can also be pushed off due to corona fear it releases the release the anxiety level of an individual the chronic backache can be pushed off the diabetic sugar level you know can be decreased so it gives a sense of balancing so this is what we want what else we need so the uh, through yoga you can see that the nadis are also stretched basically as i said you know the back side if you are trying to do halasana you are trying to stretch the whole body if you are trying to do meditate in meditation you can see your uh, nadis and sabin cleans through pranayama your nadis are also cleans and stretched so basically the energy flows through nadis and the chakras are activated so this is what we want you attain you know the supremo power that that is called as the heaven basic heaven you need to where the mind is clear no thoughts nothing you, you feel that as though you are still flying 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 and you are moving in the air you know that is what and if you could see the reflexology is also working today and basically the lazy people who are not be active can get on to such kind of thing now what is this unblockage as i said you know when anahanta that is your heart gets more blood flow you 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 feel happy when you happy you feel happy you feel that the love and compassion in you is increased so the heart chakra is responsible for love and compassion and uh, next when you see when you look at this uh, uh, basic physical exercises that we do you know it hit upon the major that is what i'm making a comparison between the physical exercise and the yogic asana so doing physical exercise has got enormous effect at the same time you know yogic practice can also take you through this pandemic situation so when you look at the basic exercises you go with the standard warming up it hits the major muscle basically the opposite group of muscles starts working and less than 5 minutes the effect of it goes placed to like uh, uh, anahanta chakra or if you you see the oxytocin or the love hormones that remains only for few minutes and then uh, uh, you end up with certain pain and the aches so what happens is for temporarily when you look at the body building movement you know it leads to equinephrine and endorphin it is only for short duration 
during the physical exercises and there is no energy flow using the energy model and just opposite muscle work and sometimes it also leads to muscle stiffness there is a high with running you know you start breathing very high while you are running and then you calm down as it comes down whereas in yogic practice you don't find such kind of increase in heart rate as such and uh, only you try to work on the lungs through pranayama through uh, kapala bharti and uh, all those kind of pranayama no energy flow using the energy model takes place right so other benefits of yoga when you look you know it still the mind gets stillness this is what we want you know if you are some great people i love to be alone i want to see the greens i want to see the ocean i want to see something nothing is there but you want to live uh, still so through yogic practice the mind becomes stillness okay oxytocin flows and the inflammatory response lessens so anywhere wherever the blood clot can take place can be lessened and the interaction that are presented from environment becomes less provoking for the stress response even uh, whatever goes on in the family or in environment you don't get provocated you don't get influenced if you are practicing yogic practice is on in your you and then the breath work or the pranayama basically goes with inhalation uh, there are four phases inhalation retention exhalation again so bahari kumbhaka andri kumbhaka so the phase where there is two phases where you try to hold the breath so inhalation exhalation is two phase bahari kumbhaka and the andri kumbhaka is there so there are four phases which goes with the breathing and there are 26 different techniques that can work for making more efficient you can make your lungs more efficient you don't have to practice all the 26 different techniques every day but you can choose a few every day along with the yogic asanas you can get on now when you look into this component of yogic diet you know diet definitely makes a difference uh, when you get into the science of yoga so when you look into the sadhvik rajasvik and tamasvik so this is a science which the yogic diet has spoken about and um, uh, or what the yogis basically take is the sadhvik food sadhu sadhus what they take the, the quality what the food they take leads to love light and long life this is what they do you see those sages have been living for more than 110 years 20 years and then they attain samadhi where did they go none nobody knows so this this goes in that manner what is this rajasvik food the rajas basically the rajas the great you know people who used to go to the war, uh, war site you know they used to let me get on to for sadhvik food so sadhvik food basically is a whole grain or cereals fresh vegetables fruits uh, legumes the dry nuts uh, seeds honey herbal tree milk butter cheese you can go with this and then rajas was only for those rajas those uh, warriors who used to go to in the war field used to eat only in the morning and used to go to the war field and come in the evenings so they gave them the food which could not allow them to feel hungry again till the sun sets so that kind of food was prepared which used to be very deep fried non veg oily with so much of spices you know salt and then chili so that they'll get angry in the war field they should not have any uh, uh, i mean uh, partiality with the opponent so that kind of thing they had but still some of the gunas are there where some of the rajasvik food can lead to good digestion so we have to if you see this corona thing what you need to take is this garlic ginger uh, pepper uh, uh, these are basically good even for the health even during this pandemic time so when you can see this rajasvik food which is more fast with the disturb it leads to disturbing your mind and which could also disturb your peace in your mind and um, uh it could also lead to indigestion sometimes when it is overtaken now when you see tamasvik food tamasvik food means the food which takes slow tamas tamas means slow what happens it leads to heaviness so that is why during the examination time we don't allow children to eat food which is prepared previous night we ask the mothers to give the food which is light which is steamed food which can easily be digested and which can supply energy to the brain this is what we want whereas if you go with the tamasvik food it takes you to the heaviness it leads to dullness it does not allow you to act very smartly and 
uh, which can make you to sleep even in the examination hall. So uh, that, that is where it goes with it, which includes alcohol. I'll tell you what are the things which goes with it. And we also sometimes call them as empty calorie because it doesn't have calories. So sometimes the tamasmic food goes with the meat, fried food, deep fried, stale food, overripe food, frozen food, junk food, alcohol, sometimes onion and garlic also comes into tamasmic, which leads to laziness. So when you look into the signs, there are basically the Panjabudas we speak about, the space, uh, air, fire, water, earth. So these, these are the five elements that it takes our body to. So when the Vada, Vada is too much, then what happens is there is more of space in the body. The gas formation takes place. When there is a Pitta, Pitta means there is more of fire, you can't you feel your throat is all very bad and you get dakar you get in turn you know uh, burning kind of sensation it gets into and then kabab leads to more of uh, uh, phlegm or sully or what we call it as the corona like you know cold and all that so when you choose the food it, you should have balance of vada pida and kaba no uh, we cannot say any this food is good that food is bad but then we basically go with the uh, you need to be balanced in whatever you take. So uh, the food which are prohibited, basically, if you want to uh, become real yogi, you should avoid bitterness, sourness, pungentness, salty, uh, I mean, uh, too hot, sour, oily, uh, you know, alcohol, non-veg, all these things can be basically avoided if you think, right? Now, if you see a person in front of you is, uh, who is, means he's Mr natural at the age of 18 he was all with the different kinds of you know uh, protein powder and trying to show off his body okay and today if you see he is now 50 years old and he has opened his own yoga center and uh, he is very fine you know so uh, this is called as realization one need to realize uh, what we are doing whether i am a drunkard i am a smoker i am a uh, Romer, I have certain bad quality. Every individual knows what uh, the bad qualities are there in oneness. But that realization will come through yogic practice. So when you look into the asanas, basically it is a, and the exercise, you know, it go, it is an isotonic moment of muscles takes place in it. There is a concentric and eccentric uh, con uh, contraction of the muscle takes place in that. And then the red muscle fibers are active during isometric moments then white muscle fibers are active during isotonic movements and then oxygen consumption increases basically in uh, exercise and whereas in yogic practice it gets decreased now when you see asanas does not uh, uh, can you just take off this i'm not able to see the slide okay so asana means basically a posture thiram sukham asanam if you're sitting on eggs if you're fine that means fine if you're sitting on nails that is, if you feel comfortable on sitting on the nails, Thiram Sukham Asanam. So uh, this is what we call it as any posture. If I'm sitting on this chair, if I'm comfortable, okay, fine. I'm That is my asana. If I'm, uh, this, this is it goes. So asana means any kind of posture. You basically exist, okay? The existence. Asana means existence. The existence means without doing anything. So that is where we go with it. And in asana, there is hardly any moment. In the next slide, I'll show you how it has been basically the science goes with it. And a steady posture is asana. Hence, we can give the definition as thiram, sukham, asanam. Any posture which gives comfort is called as asana. So steady and comfortable posture is also called as asana. So when we look into this thiram, sukham, asanam, there are asanas. A steady and comfortable posture without movement and also with movement with movement it goes with the slow movement and sometimes with fast movement so you can go with the Surya Namaskara with fast movement you can see the increase in the heart rate and then slow movement you can go with power yoga slowly start with 25 asanas from morning uh, standing to sitting you complete one cycle of it and you you can relax concentrate on your mind so it goes this way now, when you go with the slow movement with steadiness for a certain period and concentrating the mind on any organ of your cell body, say, for example, this asana has been done. Okay, Lingasana. So while you're performing that particular asana, 
try to concentrate on that particular body where the stretches are taking place and what are the organs that have been activated if you are suffering from diabetes you need to concentrate where the pan pancreas are and how can uh, you can allow the pancreas to become active you have to imagine you have to concentrate only then that organ will start functioning well by concentrating the mind on any particular organ the mental energy will be provided to it i tell you it, the, it has literally worked in it uh, in the many hospitals even in usa as a result that particular organ will improve its function that is literally the science which has uh, even shown the research and as i said you can concentrate on the liver to get away from the liver problem you can concentrate on your heart uh, um, you can get away from the cardiac diseases so one need to have positive attitude only then we can start functioning well now when you look into this there is a self realization takes place that is known your subtle mind so even without your knowledge there are certain things which consciously you know it works behind you even you are not aware of it what it does so yoga basically connecting individual consciousness with the nature also termed as self realization if he is a smoker if he is a drunkard if he is a so and so so and so so and so in any bad quality he need to realize himself that is where we call it as prayer you know even in prayer you are uh, uh, touching your self consciousness it goes with self realization you admit what mistake you have done and then it takes away that is one form of meditation when you get into prayer so the self realization comes into it brings emotional physical mental and spiritual well being is brought through yogic practice the subtle body the three channels the iddanadi pingalanadi and the sukshma nadi and all the seven chakras okay from muladhara chakra to swadhin uh, sahasthara chakra you know uh, all the chakra plexus are being touched upon through yogic practice gleaming energy kundalini shakti is evoked in you when connected with nature one feels peace the silence the joy and reduced stress if you want to feel cool you will feel cool if you want to feel hot you will feel hot this is what if you want to feel the vibration you know you can feel the vibration and this is the, the actual effect of yoga that you can enjoy now you must be thinking how and why do we need to do yoga and in what way are we going to do yoga is it right way that what i am doing am i doing it correctly so when you get into the basically the asanas you know you need to look upon the alignment so when you look into this posture you need to see the body alignment you cannot bend one part and another part and no. it has to go in a coupling of the movement okay so alignment of the body posture should be there and the repetition should be there without the repetition even if it is a surya namaskara right leg and left leg right leg left leg that six times which leads to 12 sets of surya namaskar so repetition should be there to get the effect of the asana in that you have the contrast like forward bending backward bending surya namaskara leads to backward bending forward bending right leg left leg you know this is called as contrast if you perform your ardhagati your chakrasana on the right side you can need to go on to the left side so if you are going to halasana get on to paschimottanasana so the contrast the proximity how can you reach you know uh, don't try to overdo and try to balance if you are getting on to such a difficult asana you need to balance yourself by making use of props props can be used like pillows like uh, uh boxes like towels uh, bands ropes you know uh, chairs all these can be used to just give a balance to yourself so that you can reach the proximity so when you look into your the uh, body you know the this is the line of gravity which you, you have to see so after doing yogic asana you should be able to see that your body posture is absolutely perfect you can touch upon your ear lobe your shoulder you can touch upon your hip joint the knee joint and then it leads to your you know ankle anterior side of this uh, uh, ankle so this is what we want the perfect body to be in balance so not that only through physical exercises you can perform this through yogic practice you can get on so the science basically goes is uh, not only absence of diseases 
but you should be physically mentally socially and spiritually you should be fine so not absence of diseases have again you know is one question mark like almost uh, you see uh, one gets older the more they become inactive the more they stick on to the tv channels more on tv serials it all everything gets influenced so start with the physical the day you start finding your even you let me start with the hair the number of hair per square centimeter if the hair starts falling you should become conscious yes something is wrong whether the diet or what so if you are mentally getting disturbed all of a sudden you are getting angry that means something is wrong in you get become alert right if the society is not liking you if your family is not liking you your institution is not liking you your friends are not that means you are not having any social balance so uh, and then spiritual you are not able to sit and concentrate and pray even for 3 minutes what is that you are so that means something is bad something is wrong which is going on in your body you definitely have to get on to yoga so through yogic practice if you see this veera bhadrasana you know see the number of muscles that are getting affected don't think that doing yogasana can uh, not bring out or develop your muscles so see the muscles deltoid pectoris major your rectus abdominis your minor pectoris minor your sartorius the your psoas muscle you know your quadricep group of muscles your hamstring group of muscles all these are been touched upon so single yogasana can lead to so much so i have given you another closer view of this asana how does it affect brings a strengthens your musculoskeletal system also so this is the camel posture which you can see how the asanas are being uh, i mean they're stretching the muscles how they are trying to develop those muscles uh, and you can see even the neck part you know you can also reduce your double chin your face can become more agile by doing even chakrasana every day so this is another uh, asana where you can see the posture how the warrior posture is taking you how there is a spine uh, that can lead you not to the scoliosis either c shaped scoliosis or s shaped scoliosis so doing asana can also uh, improve upon your perineum muscle which is under your buttocks do by growing older this muscle sag so once they sag they are not in a position to sit comfortably even in a chair also so uh, yogic asana can always keep you young throughout your life so this is called as bandha which has got a very big science behind it where you, when you perform jalandhar bandha udhyana bandha and mula bandha where you inhale tuck your head in squeeze your asana anus don't allow the air to come either from the top or from the bottom and hold the whole air inside your body it is called as maha bandha maha means reaching the uh, you know the uh, everest you know that kind of scientific effect takes place when you get on to the maha bandha and the science is very very high and uh, uh, this udhyana bandha you know you can pull your stomach in and then hold it for a while today corona is giving a very good result with the udhyana bandha where udhyana means flying upward it is said to be the best bandha it is the elephant that kills the lion named death you know uh, you can kill anybody so even if you see horse you know before horse can run it will squeeze its anus it squeeze and then it will leave it you know i don't know how many of you have seen right so it is uh, it also touches touches upon your ashwin mudra when you get on to this so uh, doing asanas can activate your energy in a complete manner it massages the whole organs internal organs we cannot rub and press it you know only through yogic practice you can get on and this uh, udhyana bandha will massage and tone the uh, muscles of the internal organs it also moves the upward energy in and up towards the chest so this is we want so here is the science which says that when you even get on to the um, asanas you know how it brings influence on your um, muscles basically so you can see the jalandhar bandha can influence your complete uh, uh, neck region where your sternum mastoid muscle is being activated your double chin is pulled off your facial muscles gets activated and then when you get on to the bandha your rectus abdominis muscle your um, longitudinal or oh, rectus femoris muscles all these things are getting enlarged 
Udayana Bandha can lead to that. And your solar plexus are also being touched upon and the third chakra is also touched upon. So uh, never think that yogic asanas will uh, only in vain you are going to do, but it definitely uh, works. So when you see uh, today, the researchers have gone to the level and uh, uh, one of, sometimes they used to say that, I'll take you to the previous slide, okay? Um, right. So, uh, so earlier, the people used to say that the asana, which is a king of all the asana, you know, where it, uh, you can touch upon your head, your face, your eyes, your spine, and the whole of the body uh, gets activated, you know. When this is compared to this asana or parvat asana, where the biomechanical study has been done, where it says that there is an equal uh, weight which is put upon your hands, your wrist, your elbows, your, uh, you know, complete leg. And there is no cause of injury in such kind of asana. And today, uh, parvat asana has become the king of almost all the asana, then sarvang asana. Again, I'll show you that previous asana. So, Sarva Anga Asana, if you hold this asana for at least three to five minutes every day, I think you don't have to do any asana. You, you are ever you, beautiful, ever you, you can hold it and you can get away from all kind of problems. So, from uh, Sarvanga Asana, today the researchers have gone to the level where Parvat Asana is called as today king of asana because this asana doesn't lead to any kind of uh, injury also. So, when you look into the biomechanical analysis of the all these postures you know it basically leads to stabilization in priority over mobilization with emphasis given to lumbo pelvic stabilization this is we want lumbo pelvic stabilization principles where externally or internally supporting the yoga posture it also increases the viscosity the viscoelasticity uh, stretch reflexes and then flexibility and the connective tissue is basically our goal so it, you can also prevent injury during the postural formation where you can protect the small, small joints when you get onto the uh, yoga asana. So when you see this posture, again, uh, you can see it, it is also performed as one of the balancing exercise or could be asana and how you can bear your whole body weight in one single hand, you know. This is what we want, the weight bearing asanas. You even walking is one of the best weight bearing exercise. But when you get on to such kind of exercise where you try to even have a balance. So yogic asana definitely helps you to uh, develop that. So when you stretch this uh, quadricep group of muscles, you see the arm trying to wait. Here, the research has spoken that uh, the pressure which is coming onto the ankle is minimized. When, you, when the body weight is totally on the four parts of your body, your two legs, your two hands, and that is a complete stretch over the spine, and then this chakrasana um, um, can help you to get onto the beautiful structure where the complete muscles are being stretched. So you can see the signs, how the muscles are being developed through yogic practice. So yogic practice can be used for even getting away from disorders of the body, keeping the body correct in health condition, improves the mental capacity, it increases the intellectual power, you know, when there is a more blood circulation which reaches your brain, even people with getting gray hair can prevent, you know, children today are getting gray hair, why? Because the blood circulation to the brain, to the head is not there, okay, they're all the time sitting, they're not bending forward, so through practicing yogic practice, you can see the blood flow to eyes, to the head also takes place, so you can see one of the prop that is being used in this posture, so this is the yogic science. You can also see how the muscles are being developed in this. And even in Chakrasana, you can Dhanurasana, how the back pain can be released, how the complete body, the muscles are functioning, including your facial muscles, your ears, everywhere you can find the uh, it touches upon. So this is what is the science. So you can start every day with the standing asana. You can start with Vakrasana and then slowly touch upon the all the asanas that you can collect on your standing and then get on to your sitting asana, then lying and then complete with the uh, Shavasana. So uh, the science goes with uh, Yama, Niyama, Pranayama, then Asana, you can, uh, or Asana, Pranayama. This can be reverses either this way or that way. Okay. Now when you see the love hormones, what are the love hormones? 
the oxytocin serotonin and dopamine is being secreted so after you uh, completing your everyday cycle of 45 minutes to 1 hour of yogic practice spend out of your 24 hours definitely you can spend you can effort to spend at least 1 hour of 24 hours for your body in, in performing any form of yogic practice so what basically you know our breathing rate has direct relationship with our emotions this is the science which has proved it, it the practice of pranayama increases the breathing volume and hence reduces the uh, you know breathing rate now when you compare that you know with the life span so here i have one research has come out which speaks about the number of time you breathe per minute okay so if you see the mouse which breathes 120 times in a minute it lives the life span is only 3 years and rabbit and the pigeon it keeps breathing 40 times a minute the life span is only 8 years dog and the monkey take 30 breath it the life span is 15 to 18 years to the maximum sheep 25 years horse 40 years right so uh, when you compare elephant it takes only 12 breath and lives for an average of 120 years a snake lives for 130 years you can't imagine the tortoise takes 6 breath per minute and lives for 150 years and turtle takes only 4 breath a minute right it lives for 250 so we human being basically breathe from 16 to 18 times and the life span goes from 60 to uh, 80 you know to the maximum even if somebody crosses 70 75 80 today it has become a real magic so when you look upon the uh, breathing you know the inglenardi pinglenardi the right side and the left side so there are two names the science of yoga has given as the right and the left so left is iddhanadi and right is called as pinglenardi another name is chandra vedana surya vedana chandra and the surya effect on the body leads to coolness and the warmness and the brain side the right side of the brain and the left side of the brain how does the mind control the subconscious mind is also control the conscious side of the right side how it governs is the emotions and the thoughts are being governed what is the faculty institution and the intellect what do you gain devotion knowledge what is the induction rest and activity what are the factors quality and the quantity so when you go with the breathing with your left and go with your right again with the right go with the left so this is where it works the the science goes this way even it is said that the male baby and the female baby is born based upon your nadis how it works the ingla nadi or the pingla nadi so when you see the brain the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain are working so when the right side of the brain starts functioning you are working on your emotional coordination your imagination your holistic thinking your art your rhythm your non verbal your feeling your visualization all that comes into your day dreaming you know everything comes into your right brain what goes with the left is logistic analytic sequencing linear mathematics language all these computation all these come so there are many researches which speaks how to develop your right side of the brain the left side everybody is right handed and how we go with it so we through yogic asana where you try to use your right side and the left side the both side of your brain the hemisphere starts working and what it leads to is the whole brain works thus it leads to uh, egoless perception egoless motives wisdom peace joy love compassion integrity all top performance you know you see all those who are into yoga will definitely give a top performance i, I am not criticizing you know these are all the uh, actual incidents that we have come across now when you look into the breathing pattern you know you can the sadvik pranayama which goes with the benefits you know you can go with the two is to one is to two is to which you can influence upon your respiratory rate you can protect your heart attack and if you go with the ratio all these are the ratio which can control your emotion your metabolism your strengthening of the body awakening the mind calms the senses and rejuvenation so you in inhale with the count of 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 16 count count again hold it for eight counts 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 again exhale it for 16 counts and again after exhaling there is a phase called as emptiness okay that is called bahari kumbhaka you need to hold that for another eight count so you rejuvenate yourself and this is where we go with the yogic practice and you can also get away from 
the pandemic of yoga so basically the human lungs are such a long you can spread that even a basketball court can be spread tennis court can be spread such a big surface it can that's what i have addressed even in my earlier point where together the lungs contain 2400 kilometers of airways approximately and average adult body will contain approximately 5 liters of blood so when uh, uh, it comes with the human heart pumps about 70 ml of blood per minute when you see with the 42 beats per minute that we take we are trying to take 5 liters of blood is pumped per minute and average you know you see about 7200 liters of blood is pumped per day this adds up to 26 uh, lakhs 28000 liters of blood per year so just imagine how uh, we people are trying to get on and the more we are trying to you know control all these things the lifespan also increases so about a uh, uh, number of liters of blood gets pumped by the lifespan of 70 years so just imagine how much our body is getting on to the if you are living for 70 years so it is a good saying you know he's a great you know uh, john lennon the great singer he when he was very small you know uh, he gives an anecdote stating when i was five years old my mother always told me to be happy and that is the key to life so once when he went to school the teacher asked what do you want to become this man went and wrote this boy while he was in school days i uh, he wrote that i want to be happy then the teacher said uh, nonsense he doesn't know what is life but later on in his life he understood you know what that i told them they cannot understand life so if you can realize what is the ultimate goal of a life is only to attain happiness so happiness should be there if we are there we need to uh, i mean live happily not that you live with stress or with uh, trying to get away from distress right so this uh, 10 steps to get into yoga is do yoga do yoga more do yoga even more do yoga even more than that do yoga when you don't want to do yoga when you do do yoga anytime every day keep doing yoga yes uh, with this i thank uh, dear participants for the kind listening now you can come out with questions may i request ms aruna sujata to come forward with a discussion okay ma'am thank you from the bottom of my heart, I convey our sincere thanks to you, ma'am, for your brilliant presentation. And it was very innovative and informative. We are really motivated to practice yoga in daily life. Along with diet, which we have to opt in our daily life, especially during this pandemic, to prevent and to get rid of the infection, if we are infected. Dear participants, now it's your time to interact with the speaker. Please post your questions in the chat box. Somebody can raise your hands. You can ask them to unmute and ask the question if not. Suja? Dr. Suja? Why is it is that some people question. are attributing religious color is, to it? Yes, there is one question which is being attributing religious color to it. Ah, why? Because um, uh, some people have made yoga because the yoga took its origin from the Vedic period, okay, in India. So 
uh, actually when you speak about the previous india india was totally hinduism was there and then uh, from there actually yeah and that is why people have now actually there is no religion to it there is no color to it you have to think into your body there is no uh, uh, parity or you don't have to dispa uh, give a uh, you know jyoti ma'am ha ah. ja yes madam suja madam tell me am i audible yeah so there is no color creed or caste in yoga it is only for yourself you are going to do no need to add any color to it or uh, to yoga that's it that's it any other question are there any tips for beginners to practice yes the beginner children and one more question yeah are there any tips for the beginner to practice doing yoga yes 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 suja i am also on to the chat yeah so uh, children can perform yogasana without holding the posture for longer otherwise it will affect their height okay so i see in the competition they are holding 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 till they say relax no children should not be allowed to hold the posture for very long mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, give them starting with the pranayama so that the lung capacity increases ask them to go and sit in the sun so that the density of the bone increases and uh, start on with the regular routine ma'am can you please suggest correct asana for 50 years old suffering from cervical spondylitis yes cervical spondylitis can lie on the stomach can you see me yeah so you can yes, lie on the stomach keep your arms here and try to do one or two that is crocodile posture okay Cro crocodile posture you can leave your one arm and then lie down again get up put your arms like this okay and then lie down again come back so this can help you to get on to crocodile position avoid using pillow okay try to do chakrasana with Uh, chakrasana that or uh, dhanurasana okay no no weight on the um, wherever there is more pressure on your neck avoid doing that slowly you can strengthen but you have been leading is sitting in a wrong posture which has brought to this so don't worry you can be fine you can also go for traction if possible ask them to pull your neck you know and then leave it and then relax sometimes it can also help you the traction or cervical traction can help you yes next uh covid 19 relaxation asana yes you have to meditate you have to do pranayama the moment you do pranayama and uh, relax uh, meditate you find your body will be relaxed so one question asked by ma'am your phone please government college my phone number yeah i shall give you suja can also give you um which is the best time to do yoga uh, best time uh, to my knowledge early morning while the sun is before the sun rises you know and before the sun sets these are the two times where uh, you, that you can perform evening 5 to 6 6:15 and then in the morning again 5 to 6 6:15 so these are the two ideal times that you can perform uh, yogasana and pranayama where you get the fresh air your mind is still you are not with any tension your stomach is free from all kind of discomfort inside thank you uh i am very okay any other question please there is somebody having spondylitis yeah the eyes just now spoke suja okay 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 uh madam children with started for age you can see the baby starts doing while the baby is in mother's womb they are with the mudra okay so when the baby is sleeping you see them they will be sleeping with chin mudra as they grow up they will get put their thumb inside their mouth they are with the maha mudra and while they are in mother's womb they are in the chin maya mudra mother's womb so baby will breathe with the yogic breathing you see them Uh, you know while they are sleeping their complete stomach will go up and down up and down so there is no age for children even while the baby is born you know before the bath you can give them halasana after the body massage give them halasana you can take them upside down you know 
from the newborn baby with certain precautions not trying to force the children you can give them uh, asnas not to hold the breath for very long or not to uh, hold the posture for very long that is very ideal for children okay aha somebody is asking for ppt madam <laughs> Uh, see, I have been taking long effort in preparing it, so you would have now got some ideas. Okay, so another question by Jayanti: How long should we do yoga during? I mean, per day she has asked. So uh, you can start basically with the pranayama, ten minutes, right? You can do yogi kasana where you can perform one complete cycle, which might take uh, Surya Namaskara would take ten minutes to seven minutes if you are doing twelve sets. You know, you are more exhausted. and then go with the relaxation right so it will take another 40 minutes to 50 minutes to uh, finish your everyday session sir is ready gonil uh, shesh gonila sir is ready now madam please suggest for relief of student stress yes you can give them very uh, light food which is easily digestible Yes, question by uh, Kari Kari and Mahi. Kari and Mahi, I'll just give you the answer to your question that uh, uh, children should be given food which is freshly prepared, not old food, not junk food. Uh, don't give them with Complan or Horlicks or any kind of such uh, mixed with uh, drinks. You know, uh, which could lead to formation of worms in the stomach. Might not get digested. Might he might be become allergic to something. So. give them good fresh vegetables fruits and teach them early age itself and give the importance of what today you are giving you tell the child see you have got vitamin c b comp uh, protein and then little of carbohydrate you teach the child the child will take open the food and then see yes i have carbohydrate i have fat i have protein i have vitamins in my food so he will he happily try to give them okay don't give them the last day prepared food you know which might spoil their digestive system and they may not like to eat the food later on okay another person has asked can you share the best share yogasana for uh, okay 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 polycystic ovary women yes polycystic ovaries can be uh, avoided very slowly and gradually first thing is you need to reduce the body weight one two is try to perform um, bada konasana which is good for the pelvic uh, exercises a pelvic floor exercises are good for polycystic uh, ovaries and um, perform uh, slowly try to reduce the intake of fats in your body take lemon juice with hot water and honey if honey if you want you can add if not no need so if you are taking regularly this the fats around your uh, um, fallopian tubes can be reduced and the uterus will get better lighter and you need to basically go to a gynecologist also and take the suggestion from doctor that's it so another question uh, i'm having uh, high blood pressure thyroid migraine high uric acid ma'am may i know your age please uh, anjana anjana your age please 37 yeah what man at this young age uh, see thyroid is blood pressure thyroid these are all from the heredity okay uh, and sometimes uh, which asana is good for me so don't get into the asana where the head is coming down because since you are with hypertension so blood flow to this uh, head should be avoided do any asana which goes with the forward uh, and the lying asana but not reaching the head okay one be regular for, for thyroid you have to get into halasana where your chin should touch and you know it should prick your thyroid position okay your gland thyroid gland so that is how you can touch upon that and slowly and gradually become a fan uh, addicted to yogic asana definitely you can get away from thyroid so for thyroid you can go another person has asked uh, i don't know her name uh, ma'am for thyroid which is the suitable asana you can get on to if you don't have hypertension you can perform sarvangasana where your chin is touching your thyroid gland halasana where the chin is touching your thyroid gland and 
and dhanurasana where your thyroid is being stretched in a reverse manner so these three asanas can be performed reduce your uh, intake food uh, eat early in the evening by 7 7:30 you should have your dinner and morning you will find your stomach is fine okay so ma'am stomach loss with asana yeah this is these are the asanas that you need to perform eat early uh, sleep to, go to the bed bed early by 9:30 get up early in the morning all your discomforts will go off ma'am is the, if there is a small hole in the nose and there was a problem of csf leakage no 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 cfs leakage is concerned with your um, uh, forehead uh, fracture so if your um, fluid is flowing from the brain you have to heal first your fracture of your forehead go to the doctor take bed rest you need to be in the bed rest so that this part of your portion gets healed up so this hole can be cured by taking calcium go to the doctor immediately and get treated otherwise brain will drain its cfs then uh, risk is more so avoid that okay by doing you another question by deepu by doing yoga will it help to improve muscle strength yes obviously it will improve your muscle strength i have been showing all upon that uh, somebody is asking madam which asana is better for migraine breathing asana is the pressure point you need to touch upon the pressure points of the migraine points are there okay so touch upon your migraine point you can cure every uh, ask somebody to perform for you whenever you get headache but you you can will it help to improve muscle strength yes of course ma'am for diabetics yeah as i said diabetics which is suitable for me when my age is 21 you are type 2 or type 1 diabetic uh tell me you are in which type ma'am gastric problem yes par pavana mukta asana is very good for gastric problem and all twisting asana early in the morning you need to perform twisting asana can take away all your gases pavana mukta asana is lie down and press both the knees on your chest hold for 10 minutes all your gas from the body can be pushed off so that is good for you uh, ma'am which asana is suitable to reduce anger and overcome excitement yes complete yogic practice including meditation can help you there is one question support uh, suppose we can't do yoga regularly we gain weight is it right or wrong no you have to reduce your intake if you are not trying to shut out the energy which you are taking in food you are taking you are not exhausting you are retaining converting into carbohydrate is inside and then it is converted into fats it is stored in your body so reduce in intake of the food while you are during the lockdown okay eat uh, you can uh, one brunch lunch come brunch you can have have a gap of 12 to fasting of 12 to 15 hours in 24 hours so okay say if you are taking tonight 7 o'clock right so 7 to morning 7 becomes 12 hours 7 8 9 10 15 hours gap you need to have have the meal at 10 o'clock leave it and then have a snacks in the evening and again 7 o'clock so per day you will get on to two meals to reduce your weight or to uh, put on during the lockdown period what okay next question by jayanti which yoga can you we suggest for our college students during lockdown yeah you give them all the asanas all the asanas pranayama uh, uh, and meditation can be given to all the students during the lockdown period best yoga exercise to overcome stress and pressure situation deepu yeah Uh, all the asanas basically i will not say this is good that is good but to overcome the stress you need to first relax yourself do pranayama do meditation and while you are doing asana try to concentrate your body on that part of the body where and all the stretches are taking place next question ma'am which asana is better for migraine yes migraine as i said you need to get on to pressure point and do kapala bharti where there could be some kind of blocks which could can be thrown off okay yes thank you suja take over thank you so much thank you participants for kind listening uh, let me once again thank the uh, jmj college management the principal and the organizer um, uh, ms aruna sujata for all the efforts you have taken and to give me an opportunity to meet you all thank you so much be happy stay happy and be away from corona disease so that we can meet each other in coming days thank you so much namaste namaste thank you sujata sujata unmute
Sujata, you can unmute. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. <laughs> bye, ma'am. Bye. Dear participants, I sincerely appreciate your active interaction. Next, we will go to the second session. Now, I invite Dr. Sarojini Chiluri, lecturer in zoology, organizing secretary of this webinar, to introduce the resource person, Mr. Sesh Gonella. Hello. May I, may I audible to all of you? Hello. Um, yes, I can hear you. You can increase your voice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, ma'am. Madam, Abhi, how are you? Good afternoon, all of you. It is a great pleasure to introduce today's eminent speaker, Mr. Shesh Gunella, Executive Director, NASPO LLC, SA for Sandy Springs Organization, PA30097 USA. Good morning, Shesh sir. I think it is about 6 a.m. to you. Uh, coming to the educational qualification of uh, our beloved eminent speaker, he pursued BA Civil Engineering from Andhra University, M.Tech Computer Science and Engineering, Uspana University, India. BA with Strategy, General Management and Finance, Michigan State University, USA. He is experienced as a Chief Architect of a Fort Mott Daniels Commons from February 1999 to June 2009. Then he served as a Senior Director to Compuwe Inc. to Mackis Inc. as a Director for three years from July 2013 to September 2016. At present, he is the Executive Director in NASCO LLC USA of a Sandy Springs organization with the experience of three years, eight months. Areas of a specialization uh, is interest of healthcare, technology, and data management, technology strategy, and computing architecture, and areas of politics, technology solution development, sociological Logical impacts of global pandemics. I think we are going to the right person regarding COVID-19 pandemic, psychological impacts and mitigation strategies, hobbies, and the volunteer public speaking, financial advisory, and current affairs. Sir, we are delighted to invite you to take over this second session. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Ah, yes. Yes, Shishu. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the um, JMJ College Management, um, the principal, the convener, and the secretary um, for giving me the opportunity, and also for all of the for all of you for uh, participating today. I, I'll try to do my best in, uh, in in kind of sharing some of my ideas. Obviously, Dr. Jyoti set the bar very high, so I'm now afraid uh, how I come I try to come closer to her her level of presentation. But uh, Dr. Jyoti, thank you. That's been a very insightful uh, information that you shared with us, and we will uh, get started. So before I get started, I want to caution you that, uh, let me see if I can share my presentation. Do you see the presentation? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Yeah, before I get started, I want to make sure that I, you know, I clarify myself, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not qualified psychologist, nor I practice psychology. I'm more of a technologist. So all of the information that I gathered and trying to share today is based on my, my just observation of people around me, my um, understanding of some of the current affairs, and also just, you know, I, I try to use some common sense along with the information I find out on, 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 on internet and uh, just my interactions with different people. So I try to capture some of the information I want to share with you. Uh, I want to make it more of a conversational um, exercise than a monologue. I, I'm, I'm not here to preach uh, anything to anybody. So uh, with that, I will uh, get started. So for the next maybe 40 minutes, 45 minutes, I'll try to, uh, you know, again, present some, uh, some slides here, some of the insights. And at that point, uh, we can open up for a question and answer session, and then I'll, I'll be happy to take your questions. So just about, um, you know, about myself, um, I have been in the technology industry for about 25 years, uh, mostly on, the, on, on healthcare. Previously, I've done uh, some retail. So, uh, and before that, I was, as Sarojini mentioned, I was at Ford Motor Company. So I have, uh, you know, a, a breadth of uh, industry experiences. And, um, you know, obviously over a period of time, I've collected more, uh, I guess, knowledge. And then uh, I tried to mix you know, different um, knowledge topic areas and, and constantly kind of try to learn from folks like you, uh, all the teachers uh, and lecturers and professors. And um, again, bear with me for the next uh, several minutes here when I, when I get into more detail. So in terms of uh, just the, the scope of uh, conversation today, uh, again, I, I won't be telling you a lot of new things because mostly you know some of these things already. Uh, but again, it, it's the just bringing all of them together into a storyline so that, you know, there are, there is a, you know, there is an understanding of uh, the disease itself we're talking about and how it is impacting the whole globe, you know, uh, and then and try to kind of get into a little bit of uh, how different people are impacted by that. Because not, you know, there are so many people, so many age groups, so many races and so on that there are, uh, it doesn't affect everybody in the same way. And so I think understanding how it affects people around us is the first step towards mitigated. Because, you know, if we, the way we get affected by a disease is very different from the way the, you know, our parents might get affected and kids and so on. So I tried to delve into a little bit of how different folks, uh, psychology is impacted and then uh, and, and, and kind of explore a little more in terms of how the demographic um, variations of this disease and its manifestations are. And then not only a short term impact, because you know, we might get over it maybe in the next month, two months, six months, but the longer uh, the duration lasts, my, my friend that there is a longer term socioeconomic implications of this as well. And then we'll get into a little bit of how do we, how do we circumvent that. And then we can open up for q and A. Q &A. So, uh, you know, before we get started, I want to see it because, you know, myself, I wasn't clear until, you know, a 
a few months ago as to what is coronavirus and what is COVID, because those two terms are very uh, interchangeably used. So more, you know, obviously, a virus is a virus. You know, it could cause a lot of, uh, you know, there are not a lot of more viruses. There is, it's not the only coronavirus all of a sudden came up in 2019. There were actually more coronavirus group of viruses that, that have been uh, on, this, on this earth for, for many, many years. But, you know, as you, some of the, the you know, the biologists and the know, they are, you know, viruses mutate really fast. So today, a virus X comes in and then, yeah, there is a, uh, an antidote or a, uh, a vaccine that might target that particular virus. And then tomorrow it mutates into a different form. Then you have to start all over again because it develops resistance and, and then all of a sudden, uh, it, it's no longer curable with the older vaccine. So as part of that, I mean, that mutation is what causes uh, continuous angst for, for human beings, for, for animals and, and so on. And then, uh, then there is a disease that this particular uh, coronavirus caused and that's what is COVID. So basically it's a COVID disease of 2019. So God forbid if you know, a COVID kind of thing comes up in 10 years from now, it could be COVID-29 things like that. So we got to be careful about how do we address this from a psychological standpoint while the doctors and the researchers uh, figure out how do they, you know, kind of fix it from a medical standpoint. Uh, so, so what, what is the impact? Why is, why is it so, um, you know, so scary, if you will? Because, you know, I tried to gather a quick um, snapshot of what is the impact of it at a global level. Uh, you know, and from her, from who, from the World Health Organization, as you know, it's a global crisis, right? It's not a, it's not localized. It's not uh, to any particular country. It's it's a global one. Although it started, may have started in China, but it spread really fast. And see, uh, this is where the time of a little bit of a reflection comes in. Where you know, when you think about a coronavirus or any other virus. It's really a non-living thing. It's, you know, for all practical purposes, technically speaking, it's not living. It doesn't live. It's, it can't reproduce or it can't replicate itself. It has to have a body or a host, whether it's a human body or it's an animal body. It has to be a body to replicate. So basically, such a small virus, non-living and invisible, brought the whole world down to its knees and that's that is just a, you know for all the the economic might or military might all these countries might have they just can't do anything with this little thing so that's the that's the time to kind of understand you know what's our what's our real strength you know our real strength is not in those monetary or military aspects of it but just the ability to emotionally handle it and kind of move on with it so there is there is a hope, obviously, right? Uh, it's not all doom and gloom. You know, we have uh, we have been living with this for about four months now, and we have found ways to uh, to live with it, I guess. And then uh, then we will, as as we develop more uh, ways of addressing this ourselves, and with the help of uh, those research organizations and so on, uh, hopefully we'll come out fine at the you know, other end of it. So these stats, I don't have to read through these stats. There are about 9 million cases as of yesterday, and it's, it's probably going to grow. And you know, just looking at the United States itself, I see that um, these cases are going again, growing. So they have uh, recently kind of opened up the economy, and then all of a sudden, in a developed country like US, the cases are coming back up again. So that's something to be uh, you know, watchful about. And uh, and see how to address that. So the the the, uh, the other insight that I like to share here is how is it affecting everybody? You know, this this in coronavirus doesn't know race, religion, caste, none of that stuff, right? It just it attacks everybody. It attacks, attacks human beings. It attacks um, you know non-human beings as well. All all the living beings is at the top at the at the risk of kind of getting affected by this. But uh, what, what we need to pay attention to, because you know, what I did here is not to uh, collect all the metrics or statistics about other demographic aspects of it. You know, there is a, when you talk about demographic of, of human, 
there is a race obviously in countries such as uh, you know, US or some of the European countries, there are multiple races of people and it affects like African Americans, let's say Asians. But I tried to focus a little bit more on the age factor because in India we are all one race, right? So that's where uh, I, I try to bring that, that sort of age as a, as a factor here. So what you observe here is uh, as it started, uh, you know, way, way back in March, you know, the younger you know you are, the less vulnerable you are. So as you grow older, if you see the 85 and above, the red line really high up there, like a mountain, and that's you know that's consistent theme. That's uh, what we have been observing everywhere. Uh, even in my in my work, uh, I look at the data coming from across the United States, from different states and see how I kind of notice how these health patterns are uh, manifesting themselves in that, uh, because you know, the analytics is what we use to, to uh, target individuals, to target patients and see how to uh, provide them with best healthcare possible. So from that standpoint, as you see, the younger you are, uh, the, you know, the better off you are, uh, and then um, the, the good news is, of course, that as you see, uh, coming, uh, it, it coming to about um, June, middle of June, the death rates are reducing. They are not only reducing for one age group, but they're reducing for all age groups. So th that's what the kind of this uh, curve so shows is that, yeah, there's been a spike in around April. I know a lot of governments have put in some good, um, I would say, uh, good practices, restrictions, good uh, interventions that helped us to kind of address this a little better as it's shown uh, as of June 13th, uh, as you see here. But as we, you know, who knows, right? There is a little bit of uncertainty the way it's, it's uh, kind of fluctuating. So I, I hear that, you know, the, the, uh, some of the um, remitigation methods that we have been using, the masks and social distancing and things like that, are going to help for sure because they are helping as this picture shows and also i think the better the better situation would be when in a couple of months from now we get uh, maybe a, a vaccine then all of a sudden you know we have access to the medicine and medicine and then we can get that uh, over with a little bit more so that's the um, that's where we are on the um, you know, how it affects things. So moving on, here is where I, I wanted to, you know, bring your attention a little bit to, you know, how, again, we know the health, we know the casualties, we know, you know the, the bad news we are hearing, but beyond just the, uh, you know, the physical health, there is a mental health factor also here because you know, we are all humans, we all have our emotions, we are, that affects our psychology, the way we behave. Uh, I, I try to kind of list down, you know, typically what types of uh, behaviors or what type of psychological, um, you know, emotions we, we all go through. Uh, so you know, there are, you know, there are 10, 12 basic emotions that every human kind of goes through. There's a happiness, you know, no one complains if everybody's happy but people start complaining if they're not, you know, they're not happy and they, they get into some kind of a, a stress. They're, you know, they're, you know, they're sad about some things. They're, they're angry and you know, there's a lot of confusion the way it's going on. And in, 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 many, uh, in many adolescents and even older people, that loneliness is another aspect that we gotta be careful about because a lot of uh, developed countries and even developing countries have uh, is a growing, problem with that, with the, you know, with the stress. As you look at the younger kids, the more and more kids are getting depressed, you know, they're getting depression medication and, you know, the suicidal thoughts coming in. So that, you know, we got to avoid all of that. We got to address them, uh, all of them in a, in a very effective way. And there is no one size fits solution, right? Not every individual is different. Every group is different. Every age group is different. So there is no one size really fits all. So we need to address this more from a, holistic, you know, more broad-based standpoint. So uh, also here you see, you know, as, as we discuss about psychology and, and uh, you know, psychological effects, you know, there was a research conducted in the early on, um, it's called the, you know, the uh, sort of the um, 
risk outlook for 2020 based on the COVID. And you know, as you see, there are 37 percent of the people uh, participants in the survey. They show distress. So that's not surprising. You got to expect that a, a crisis of this uh, this magnitude definitely has a psychological impact. And uh, about 45% of adults felt ad, uh, had adverse effects on mental health. I mean, you can only take so much of an emotion for so long, right? If you're lonely for too long, if you're you know, angry about somebody for too long, or if you're jealous of someone for very long, it's going to affect your psychological um, or mental health. You know, you try to get into the depression and, and then you start medication, then you get into further depression. So it's a vicious cycle. And uh, as you see, a staggering 70% of the folks uh, felt there was this period was most stressful in their careers. Because that's, that to, to us is an alarming item because, you know, a lot of, a lot of people, right? If you take the age group of maybe, you know, zero to 80, from about 20 to 60, that's the bigger group. And that is a group of working class people that they are working for, you know, they live, they're having a livelihood, they're supporting their families. And for, you know, that is the group is, I would say most critical for just the survival of the, the, the world, right? Because that's where you, uh, you know, you, 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 you bring up your people, your kids, and you take care of your adults and, and elderly people. And that is the group of people that has the maximum effect of stress uh, in their careers, obviously. So if you look at that from that uh, standpoint, again, how it affects individuals, right? So I try to, I try to group them <clears throat> into four, four categories of people. This may not be perfect grouping. You can probably think of different groups of yourselves, but I try to, you know, divide the, the whole populace into four categories where little children are the ones I call under the age of 10. Uh, adolescents, as you know, 10 to 20, 20 10 to 19. Uh, the working adults are the majority from 20 to let's say 60, 65, and then, then the elderly and retired. So what I'm trying to, what I try to kind of understand myself and I want to share with you is how it affects these different people. Because I see little kids just running around happy playing, right? They don't know what COVID is. They don't know what coronavirus is. Maybe they hear from their parents, but they don't really care. Because for them, there is no school. Parents are home all the time. They don't need to be you know, left at a, a daycare facility or you know, in a, a crutch or whatever it is. So they're happy, right? That's, that's good. So if everybody's happy, then we don't be talking today. You know, everybody's enjoying. Uh, then the adolescent age is where you have, you know, you have your kind of grown up kids, you know, they're the teenagers, they're the college goers, the school goers. Uh, and all of a sudden they're, they're asked to uh, sit at home. Right? I have two um, teenage kids myself and now it is summer here. So they have nothing to complain, but when they are, they're already kind of worried whether their schools are gonna open in uh, in you know in august here schools open in the august and you know in india schools already open uh, but folks are i know a lot of my my cousins or my uncles and daughters and so on that are, are are already attending school but from home so there is really that is a group of people that is a the adolescent age is where you build relationships you build friendships that are that last your lifetime and that's where you know, those folks are asked to stay at home. Uh, you know, it's impacting studies. They don't know whether uh, online courses are going to continue or stop and how effective they are going to be. Uh, there is a lot of confusion because they are always on Instagram or Facebook or you know, Twitter or whatever you have. And they're everyone talking everything, right? All of a sudden, Twitter and, and Facebook, everybody is, um, has a stage to talk and, and share. And a lot of it is not necessarily they accurate news, there's a lot of fake news there, a lot of confusion. So in essence, the, you know, once you pass the age of 10 where you're happy and all of a sudden you jump into this kind of teenage, you know, you, there's a lot of confusion here. There's a lot of fear of, you know, what will I do? How will I uh, have uh, my studies continued? And, and there's a lot of loneliness because, you know, that's where we need to talk to them more. 
because you know typically these teenage kids don't don't come out and they don't talk a lot uh, so with friends not friends being around that that is going to have an impact on them on a longer term and the working adults we have seen the 70 percent slide where you have people are extremely stressed out because they are stressed out for their job whether there is going to be a job or not um, and you know as you know um, at least uh, in some of the western countries there are millions of job losses and i'm sure in in developing countries in india and china there are job losses too and that is uh, that affects individuals ability to just survive uh, there is also the sphere of contacting right as as this is a broader age group of 20 to 60 we're talking about so the people in 20s, 30s, maybe they feel okay a little bit, maybe they have a little more resistance, but as you grow older, you're into, you know, closing to the retirement age, you're in 40s and 50s, all of a sudden you have that other fear of contracting maybe the disease. Um, and working from home is not always easy, right? It's very stressful, you know, you're, you know, you're, you know most, most home, homes have, you know, smaller homes, we are not equipped to, with all the broadband connectivity. So, you know, in just from an infrastructure standpoint, we are not really quite ready to handle the, you know, everyone on getting on the internet, like parents getting on the internet, students getting on the internet, kids getting on the internet. And all of a sudden, you know, we have those issues also. Um, again, um, again, there is, there is a lot of news. Everybody, every news channel is probably looking for a TRP ratings. They're throwing whatever they, they see out there onto the news. They're talking about certain religious groups, you know, spreading it. You know, there is all sorts of, uh, I would say, bad news or fake news or, or, or um, you know, news that doesn't help us with accurate picture of what exactly is happening. So that also causes a lot of fear, a lot of distrust. You know, we, you start to develop as, as maybe elderly, elderly people or, or middle-aged people, we start to form certain opinions about certain groups of people or certain religions people, something like that. And there is also a lot of angst about how do I get over it? You know, how do I ensure my kids are safe and my, you know, we are safe, my parents are safe and so on. And then, um, and then elderly people, you know, they are, you know, they're, they're home, they're kind of, you know, hopefully they're all taken care by their kids or, you know, wherever they are, uh, they are doing well, <clears throat> but you know, when they read, like my mom lives with us, for example, I can speak from her standpoint. She is always watching um, Indian news, right? ETV and you know those things. And she tells me sometimes what she learned. You know, she says, "Oh, this group of people have done this," or you know, "I believe there is a vaccine in India." So stuff like that. She she tells me there are a lot of people like that that are looking at news. Uh, they wonder, you know, they they see that elderly people are more at risk. And uh, for them, again, they can't go outside, they can't um, meet with their neighbors, which they probably have been meeting with for many years. So they're also in that kind of a little bit of an adolescent age um, uh, situation where they're, they're feeling a little bit lonely also. And they're fearful because the, the, the more older we grow, the more fearful probably we get, just given you know, the, the age factor and some of the other factors that uh, other news that they keep hearing. So they have that uh, fear, loneliness, and, and um, kind of a little bit of a sadness that also sets in. So in, in essence, um, what I'm trying to kind of show here is there are you know, different folks, different uh, people get different um, impact of this, right? And then again, my, my point being, there is no really um, you know, one size fits all type situation anywhere here. So um, with that, then um, the next thing is not only we have um, a, a short-term impact because you know we are, we are human beings. We have seen many many issues you know before us, right? In front before coronavirus, we have seen a lot of. I mean, I guess I would say maybe not of this magnitude or size, but we have seen a lot of uh, impacts of this. So, um, and we, you know, we will get over this. We will, we will probably, uh, again, maybe come next year, we'll all be back to our lives and you know, where we are, uh, where we were before the pandemic. 
and we would have uh, moved on. We would be all in the schools and colleges and jobs and, and everything maybe gets okay. I, I hope we will get okay because you know we have to. But there is actually a systemic and or a more I call it a secular trend that this actually might impact our just thinking process going forward. So in that in, in ways that we probably don't want, or maybe some of them are not too bad, but you know, um, I, I look at this again as there might be again, as there might be more of these longer term trends, but the ones that I thought would be of interest to us to learn and to act on is inequality, right? Whether it is discrimination against people of certain you know, color or certain um, uh, creed, age, religion, caste, and so on. Uh, so that, you know, that the more fake news, the more, um, you know, I guess, bad news we hear, or inaccurate news we hear, the more, the more social implications it will have. You know, that, I think that we have to definitely um, try, to, try to address because the impact of inequality, we, you know, we have all the countries, and India, of course, really led the, you know, I would say most of the, the change in the society through you know, a lot of reforms. And we have come a long way. We have come about a hundred years of growth and development to build that sort of equal, you know, we are all equal kind of framework where there's equality between women and men, there's equality between different castes and religions, there's equality between, you know, other aspects of it. We have, we have done, uh, we have come a long way in that and all of a sudden just one virus can push us back hundred years and then we start talking about, you know, all the older, you know, what we've been talking maybe in the 1940s and 50s. So we have to be very careful with that. Uh, consumer behavior, it has more of an economic implication. Obviously there are good and bad in it um, because the good is, um, you know, we will probably be, uh, you know, getting used to new ways of, uh, you know, doing uh, or, or consuming items, right? Maybe we want to consume less. We want to save some things because you know, historically my understanding is in India, we have always been very conservative, right? We have always tried to not waste things. We want to always be careful about uh, money and and so on. And that, that's a good thing. Uh, maybe we will, we will get a little bit back to that again. Uh, but in the internet world, we want to you know, spend a lot of money. Uh, we take a lot of loans. So we are kind of westernized in that standpoint. But the, the COVID is trying to change the behavior, I think, in, in the ways where both good and bad. Um, so I, I don't want to say particularly it's a bad thing. But what I can see clearly is the, uh, the, 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 the bad effect is probably what we need to focus a little bit on. It's a good, because anything good is always a good thing. So from a bad effect standpoint, there are, you know, you know, most countries, including India, right? There are a lot of small shops, there are small merchants. And the longer the, we get used to the online buying or staying at home, we, we stop going to you know, the shops and the smaller shops are gonna be affected. You know, the, you know their, their owners are like us to their people too. And there's no business to them. And that gonna impact quite a bit because and I think that's where we have to be careful. I mean, we have to be careful, but also at the same point, same time, we have to um, you know ensure that you know we are supporting our local communities and local uh, merchants in, in in ways that that you know that that can help them. Um, on on the positive note, a lot of internet or e-commerce companies are are doing really well. You know, in the in the Western world, for example, people like companies like Amazon are really doing well and you know the stocks are growing up going up and you know again not everybody has a stock right on average individual is not a you know millionaire or anything like that so there is a positive thing that helps some people but the trend is what is of um, importance uh, here and the work on technology i think this is going to be affecting everybody right if you took from kids to all the way to the working age people the work and technology, the way of life is going to change quite a bit. Uh, we all are getting, you're all are getting, uh, 
used to remote work. I see all the, all the lecturers today, all the professors and teachers are on the call, staying at home, which is a good thing. But uh, I guess it's it's just a way of getting used to that. And and the the most critical aspect here is, you know, can the technology support it? On basis, I think, you know. The companies that I know have brought in technologies, they've, they've trained their, uh, their staff, and, and I'm sure all the schools, including JMJ, must have trained you all to, to you know, how to handle this uh, education from a remote standpoint. Uh, so, we will, you know, technology will help us for sure, but there's more than technology for our daily life, right? Daily work life, which is the collaboration, you know, the interaction with people, the face-to-face -face meetings that we have with our students, the you know the um, the relationship or the the intimacy that you build with with students, for example, in the case of uh, in a teaching industry or teaching discipline, that it, it can't replace a face-to-face -face, you know one-on-one -on -one interaction with your student or a, or a co-lecturer or a co-teacher. Uh, or a phone or internet. I mean, it's, it's not the same. I mean, we, uh, we will get used to it, I guess. That's fine, but that's not the same. So it, it, it will have a lasting implication in terms of how we work, how we interact with people. And uh, probably the most important uh, one that we all need to focus on is the mental health. How is the entire change, whether it's the inequality or it's a work, remote work, it's the way we uh, you know, behave for, as a consumer, how it affects us from a mental health standpoint. I think that, that is the critical piece. As you saw in the previous couple of uh, uh, slides before, there is about 45% of folks or people have um, you know, complained of a mental issue happening. So it, it's not a good thing, right? You know, we, we don't want to be uh, get into a mentally you know, unstable situation because that's not good for society anyway. So these are the longer term uh, impacts or implications that I see uh, you know, that we need to be cognizant of and then address them because the first, the first step of you know, solving any problem is to recognize that there is actually a problem. So without that, you don't know there is a problem exists with us and so we can't address it. So um, in the next uh, 20 minutes, I'll try to cover maybe just one slide and then I can open up for uh, questions. So, you know, what, what does it all bring to, you know, what does it really mean? So we, we talked about a lot of problems so far, you know, is there something we can do to fix it is really what we are here for, right? So there are, I mean, there's no single way of solving it. You know, if there is a silver bullet or if there is a, you know, a pill that can help it, you know, we've all taken that pill already. But it's a, it's a more, um, you know, comprehensive solution or a more broad-based solution that we need to address. It's a multidimensional one. We have to look at it from, you know, different angles. That's the, the that's why I was trying to bring that different perspective of how, of what we see in people around us and how, it may have affected them and recognizing that it affects them differently. So again, every, every problem has a solution, right? We know that, you know, you know that and you solve every problems every day, problems every day. I solve a number of problems uh, every day and, you know, a lot of people are doing that. So I try to show maybe, you know, a half a dozen ways we can, we, can, we can address this psychological, emotional, and mental, um, you know, concerns, I guess. So one, you know, as, as Dr. Jyoti said, there is nothing to beat yoga or meditation from a stress relief standpoint. You know, we have, you know, India is, and I'm proud to be an Indian in terms of, you know, having India be, being the first one or the, the founder of, or the creator of this whole yoga concept. Now it's practiced across the globe and you know, fairly uh, rigorously. And you know, there's a lot of yoga centers everywhere. Every street has one yoga center here. <clears throat> so I think, again, doing it right is right the key here. You know, again, uh, 
experts and professional um, yoga teachers in, in physical fitness uh, teachers like you all, uh, you know, you are at a much better position to explain the, the intricacies, the methods, the, you know, the, um, the, uh, the benefits of yoga and meditation. So I can't stress enough the need to get into a good meditation yoga regimen just to help us in especially because a lot of these mental psychological issues by just the stress, right? Uh, sometimes you, we don't know we are stressed out. And so recognizing that maybe just asking feedback of our own folks around us to see if they're noticing any difference in behavior of us would probably be a good starting point to know whether we are stressed out. You know, before we jump into a medication and go to a doctor, just try to understand if you are if you have uh, undergone stress and if there is a way we can seek some natural way of you know, healing, which is yoga and so on. And, but, but again, yoga is it's a great one, but that might just not be a, a, a replacement or a solution for some of the other drivers of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the psychological um, issue. I think a lot of times uh, we get carried over by our emotions. You know, I, I mentioned a lot of emotions up there. There is, you know, there are emotions such as happiness and anticipation, which are all good emotions to have because that that will create hope in us and that will get us going. But there are uh, emotions such as anger or discrimination or, or disgust or, or sadness that, you know, that is not good, right? So sometimes we, as human beings, we make judgments on just based on emotion. So I'm angry, I want to make a decision on something. I want to hit somebody or I want to curse somebody. Or I'm happy, so I want to, you know, go and just you know, buy some things. Or if I'm, if I'm lonely, so, you know, I, I just want to, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, there are a lot of suicidals and things like that that happen just because of loneliness. So I would say as adults, we are in a better position to, to use the right judgment. And, you know, again, it's not easy, right? So you need to just think a little bit before you act and make sure that you're, you're not doing something in the, in the spot of a moment or in, in, as an act of uh, reaction. And as adults, we also have the responsibility to tell kids around us, or the, our, our own kids or you know, students and so on, to, to use that. I mean, there is, it's, it's not easy, it's, it's easier said than done. But I think just recognizing that emotions will probably not always lead to the best judgments is is a good uh, good knowledge to have and then act on it and beware of things you know there's a lot of information out there there's so much information that probably we don't need so i know we are all out there on the internet every day trying to gather information from different sources so having information from different sources is a good thing because then you get a different perspective for example i myself read a lot of news but I read news from the left and read news from the right. So that I try to get distilled information that would probably be more neutral. So, because you know, if once you have two points of view, then you will be your own judge in understanding what is that that is accurate there. So I think the, the point here is don't get carried away by what you hear in one TV channel or, or one newspaper or on Facebook or on, on Facebook, but try to get that information a little more, um, you know, uh, multiple sources and try to distill that. Social media is out there. It's, it's a good thing, right? Social media is, is not a bad thing because, you know, we, we hear about things from the globe. It is not a domestic or a local item. We get a, a global perspective, especially to understand and, and address a crisis like this, you need a global perspective. Just a local or a country or a statewide perspective is really not going to give you the big picture. And the social media, you know, instead of going and looking at a newspaper from India, a newspaper from China, a newspaper from America or Europe or whatever, you don't need to, you don't have time to go to read 10 newspapers. So social media is probably a good way to get a quick pulse of what's going on around us in the world. But at the same time, you know, there are, there, are, there are other good things about social media, you know, as you probably have seen a lot of news there, you know, anything happening, even in a George Floyd case, and probably, you know, you all saw 
the racial injustice done to one of the you know folks in the in the country here the us in 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 seconds everybody know that and there are a lot of uh, reaction there are a lot of protests similar things happen in india too when you know when an atrocity happens on a woman or you know on a person everybody comes to know about it and the law enforcement is under pressure to act so there's some good things come out of that but on the next side social media has you know everybody has social media there are 7 billion people on the earth everybody becomes a a news reporter you know, because they are just so showing their opinion and we get carried away by the opinion so the point i'm trying to make is be watchful of you know what you hear just like the upper, the above point there is a lot of information use our own discretion to address or to 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 digest to read uh, and information about it. and and the next thing is really be empathetic i think the whole point is uh, understand different people have different viewpoints you know it's we live in diversity unity and diversity is, is a great thing be empathetic to people again whether it's unity and diversity in terms of our political views or whatever but i think more importantly in the, in the current environment where you are you are seeing different reactions from different people when you talk to your you know a teenage kid you probably are feeling different reaction or different point of view or a different emotional impact than you talk to your husband or a spouse you know a wife or or it will be very different when you talk to your parent so be empathetic just you know there is a there is a great saying out there um you know there is i think it it really sums up you know how we want to behave with our people ours right so it is treat others as the way you want to be treated i think that's a beautiful thing in in, in countries like some of the western countries i heard that I, i i don't really heard that in india i'm sure everyone of you probably heard that is you know just treat people around you just the way you want to be treated by them so if you keep that in mind i think a lot of things get better automatically so i think that is the essence of this is you know just understand be empathetic uh, show concern and uh, be patient with people and i think that's very critical and then i think the other thing is just i started doing this myself is you know just find a hobby or you might have had a hobby uh, when you were younger when you were a child just revive that hobby whether it is you know my my hobbies are and as i mentioned you know saroj was mentioning some of my hobbies there i i teach you know and, and i'm not a teacher i'm not a qualified teacher i you know i've not done education as my um, education as a specialization but you know you can anybody can be a teacher so i teach in my local uh, middle school where my kids went uh, to and um, you know my 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 kids you know they never cooked at home but my older son who is in college he is uh, he wants to learn cooking so it's kind of interesting that you know he he helps his mom with some of the cooking things and uh, you know i started learning uh, music you know i never learned really music until i was like 45 and all of a sudden i started learning uh, violin and carnatic music so i think there is no age bar or anything like that you know maybe there is an age bar for getting a job but there is no age bar for learning cooking or learning music or you know teaching in your school you know again you know as a voluntary thing i'm not talking about pick up a teacher job at at 45 or something but you know get into some kind of a hobby it could be just a badminton you know just brush off the badminton bat you might have had for 30 years you know in your store room or something pick it up play with your kids play with your spouse and just relax i think and and just be optimistic cuz you know there is as i said I, there is no more uh, powerful thing to be than uh, be optimistic although you know i don't call a hope or an optimism as a strategy cuz you know you you have to do the about things as strategies to address it but just being optimistic and forward looking um, as we call it the emotion the anticipation anticipating good things to come is always a good thing it just cheer up uh, it, it uh, in off your moods it will cheer you up and it's just an overall good thing uh that is about what i have uh, folks we are about 8 minutes and I'm, i'm happy to take any questions
on behalf of uh, JNJ family and all participants, I express heartfelt thanks to Mr. Shesh Gunnella, USA, for his precious and relevant message on psychological impacts and mitigation strategies during pandemic. Hobbies uh, like music, meditation, spending time in the presence of God really works more to lead peaceful life at this pandemic especially. Dear participants, now it is your time to interact with the speaker. Please post your queries in chat box. Question to you, Mr. Sheshu. Is technology really assisting all students? Is it not creating tension in the students uh, who Uh, so let me see if uh, you're, you're breaking up a little bit. So let me see if I understand, if I heard it. So the question is, is technology helping every student? Yes. What is the other, what is the uh, other question? I thought you had two uh, questions. Is it not creating tension in the students who are not able to cope up with the technology the tools usage and the ICT yeah. mode of uh, listening to the lessons? Yeah, good, good, that great is, question. Uh, yeah, that that is a, that is, I think in my view, it is a challenge um, because as I was mentioning, technology is supposed to help everybody, but there is, there has to be a, an infrastructure that should allow the technology to reach everybody, right? Technology can reach everybody if we have the right infrastructure. So, so in my view, I think, uh, you know, in, in, in countries such as India, I think the, the we, have, we have come a long way. I think we have done um, an extensive development in terms of uh, infrastructure. And, uh, but I still feel that there are uh, students that might not be really reaching, you know, if I, I come from a small village uh, in uh, West Gadari district, and I cannot imagine, you know, students in my village getting the benefit of a remote learning because they probably don't really have the infrastructure available for them, nor they can afford the infrastructure. See, in some of the developing countries, for example, the where I live in, uh, you know, schools give computers to every student. They give a computer to every student because there are a lot of poverty in this country too. And there are schools and you know, voluntary organizations that donate a lot of money to ensure that all kids are getting it. I, I can still say every kid is getting it, but in India, I think it is not uh, reaching out to every, every student in the same way it's benefiting some of the other students. So that's, that is a, an issue. That's why I feel that the continued prolonged you know, uh, issue with COVID will affect some people that might cause the inequality, not only you know, from a you know, caste religion and so on, but just you know, for people's ability to learn and get on the same page with the rest of their friends. And um, so it, it, it does put stress, uh, tension or pressure on the people who are, you know, they're intelligent, they are passionate to learn, but they don't have the means to learn it because of their, uh, you know, maybe un, un, unprivileged or, you know, or, 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 a, a, or, you know, they live in areas where we don't have the best infrastructure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, really the uh, stat, uh, tragic condition, uh, Mr. Sheshu. Because when, while I am taking my classes through Google Classroom, the same... Uh, uh, problem I have faced with my students because some of them they complain that uh, they are not able to get the net and also uh, it is uh, hard to them to uh, recharge also at this uh, pandemic time. Okay, thank you. And you yeah. have another question from Venkata Gona Reddy. Uh, what is the major difference between India and the Western world in dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, good, great question. Uh, uh, in fact, so uh, 
this is kind of funny you know i i keep uh, telling my 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 friends my my family my kids and so on actually i'm amazed at how india has actually addressed or for that matter of the developing country countries uh, whether it's india whether it's china is a slightly different animal but india vietnam you know thailand if you look at all of the countries uh, the so called third world countries have i think just much better than developed countries you know if you if you understand i'm sure you're reading news and so on us has probably by far the most cases and usa is the most developed country in the world if you look at uh, france you know one of the next developed countries in the world has probably the second largest and italy so if you look at you know, the entire developed world <laughs> that's the west of india has been handling it less effectively less efficiently than the east of india including india i think that you know i kind of funnily jokingly say that we need to actually re- redefine what is developing country and what is a developed country so i think we have done as an indian uh, country we have done better i think you know we also have to i know there are cases going up now a little bit uh, once the testing has started and so on but even even if you look at the the growth of cases in india and you know maybe eastern uh, eastern part of the world we still have uh, addressed it early i think that's the, that's really the key here is you now people say is uh, you know is um, you know it's uh, prevention is better than cure right i mean yeah we are all trying to get a cure but i think the country acted really swiftly really quickly to put some measures in place so that you know for a country of our size a billion people once it hits the, the you know the density of the population i think those steps we have taken have uh, have helped in my strong view because we have already passed the worst i hope this is already you know on the kind of a uh, you know reducing end of the curve uh, as we saw in you know, a couple of slides ago but i think um, we probably have seen the worst and i think um, i really feel that india has probably escaped the worst and i think we have to just continue to do what we are doing uh, to be more effective so again to your point to your question yes i think we have india has done or developed countries have done much better than the developed countries so it may be time for the developed countries to kind of look at their means and you know maybe a bit of their over confidence or their i don't know their um, you know their um, you know uh, non recognition of the scientific value of some of these findings but there is a big debate on that but again i hope i answer your question uh, yes sashesh at the time the decision of our uh, prime minister uh, the loud uh, prime minister it made uh, uh, us to escape from lot of damage actually we have to appreciate our uh, leaders uh, regarding Absolute. this uh, Absolute correct yeah next uh, next question that is mind consists of different faculties do you agree that any individual can capable of learning many things and the teachers uh, dear gonella please uh, discuss in it on it can can you repeat the question uh, saraj ji mind consists of different faculties uh-huh. do you mind. agree that s yes, mind okay. maybe it is a uh, mind is uh, having the different parts right. uh, uh, do you agree that any individual can capable of learning many things and teachers they are going to allow please discuss on it yeah excellent yeah that's very good i i like the question so yes i think so because you know you take yeah. you take your own case right you are we are no we are we are not we are not uh, programmed we are not a program right? we are not a robot because robots are the ones that do just one thing one thing only but we are human beings meaning uh, you know we we can do different things uh i know you probably have done i mean i i i'll take my example cuz you know i don't know what uh, you know your what some of your background is so i have i have uh, my undergrad was uh, in civil engineering and then uh, my master's is in computer science and i did uh, my mba in um, finance and you know management and strategy and i worked in an automotive company 
I worked in a retail company. I worked in, I work now work in a healthcare company. So I think every human being has, as you said, multiple, you know, teachers in, in the brain, right? Multiple areas and then you play, and, you know, some of you guys, you know, take all the teachers in this case, they, are, they, are, they know how to cook, they know how to teach their kids. Um, so I don't really see there is uh, anything that prevents us from learning anything we want. All it takes is a discipline and that first the passion to learn something and, and, and share, because you know, I haven't done really any psychology. I haven't studied psychology major or master's in psychology. But it is a, if you have a common sense and, and the passion to learn, I think you can pretty much learn anything. Any other questions or, uh, you know, we are, uh, we are yes, top yes. of the One sure. more. I have time. So if you have time, I have time. <laughs> yes. I actually, what you uh, told is correct because uh, we are the examples for it. Uh, we have uh, no uh, 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 knowledge regarding uh, ICT uses, but yet uh, gradually we have learned a lot. Uh, this is the webinar also we are connecting using this ICT, yeah. like uh, yeah. you people. Uh, really, whenever uh, the time uh, uh, demands uh, uh, definitely the human being uh, used to learn always uh, thank yeah. you for it one more uh, question <laughs> Mr. Uh, can a common man opt this yoga for relaxation from stress relief really yes I, I absolutely think so because uh, yoga is basically at, at a minimum Yoga gives you the time to just spend with yourself, right? That is the key because in the yoga, if you're practicing whether yoga or meditation, you are not surrounded by a, you know, a lot of people or a lot of uh, problems. Because I mean, the, the key is again, to isolate yourself from the rest, around, from the things around you. If you come to yoga and then you, you know, when you're doing asanas and you're talking on the phone with, you know, with a friend or with, a, you know, whoever, that is not going to help you at all. Because then you're, you're trying to, you know, relieve stress and then you're getting stressed out over the phone call. So as long as you don't do such things and as long as you dedicate your time just for yourself, you know, maybe 30 minutes a day or, you know, maybe four times a week, you know, whatever, your schedule for the yoga is, but that period of time you have to just be yourself and just practice whatever the yoga teacher says or whatever you already learned from a yoga teacher is the key. And I'm sure yoga helps uh, relieve stress. You know, it's uh, even if it is a 10 minutes, you know, if it's a Kapalabhati or Bastrika, whatever you know, or whatever you do, I think that will have a lasting impact in a positive way on everybody. Yes. And thank you, Sheshu. Uh, really, meditation, uh, it uh, increases concentration and gives peace. Uh, with yeah. my experience, I am telling. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shesh Kunella, for illuminating our participants. Our warm wishes to you and to the participants. May the good Lord lead us with his wisdom into his light to render our services to the society, providing good health to the mankind. Thank you. Over to uh, Mrs. Arna Sujata Kara, convener of this international webinar. Thank you, Sheshu. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for listening to me and thank you for the opportunity. Madam, you're ready. Yeah.
a very good evening to all it's my privilege to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of this esteemed institution of jmj college for women tenali and the department of physical education i express my sincere gratitude to professor jyoti dayanandan for her generosity to accept our invitation and presenting the topic so wonderfully and lucidly to the participants thank you ma'am for the outstanding informative and thoughtful message how to strengthen the fitness of the body through yoga and asanas i would like to thank one more beloved guest mr sheshu bonella sir thank you so much for readily accept our request and spending your precious time in your hectic schedule sir the mitigation strategies expressed by you are excellent and really useful in the present scenario our participants are fortunate to listen to you i thank dr sister teresa magadi the correspondent of the college for her support to organize this webinar thank you sister a warm indeed grateful to dr sister shaini kp principal of jmj college for her constant encouragement and guide, guidance to organize this webinar in a such a wonderful manner thank you sister i congratulate and thank the convener mrs arun sujata and dr sarojini chiluvuri department of zoology for organizing this web fruitful and successful webinar my special thanks to mr murali and mr ravi for extending their technical support last but not least our beloved participants for making this event as a grand success with your kind cooperation and participation finally in the end i would extend my whole hearted gratitude to our staff members behind the screen thank you all for making this program a huge success stay safe stay healthy through yoga so once again thanks to all the participants <laughs> Welcome to JMJ Education Dream World, JMJ College for Women, Tenali. Acharya Nagarjuna University adjudged the college as one of the best colleges in the university. The college was conferred autonomous status and was re-accredited by NAC with B grade and recognized as college with potential for excellence. JMJ College has 51 years of glorious history, where thousands of students molded into women of wisdom and character. Nearly 30,000 students have graduated, and many of the alumni of our college are working as government officers, scientists, doctors, professors, engineers, and social workers, both in India and different parts of the world. Campus placements is assured to all the skilled students. The unique features of JMJ College Education is absolute discipline, highly qualified and well-experienced faculty. ICT, teaching and learning, green campus, spacious classrooms and laboratories, airy playground, air-conditioned cyber world, good cafeteria and glorious eco park, gym and beautiful hostel. Come, visit, experience. and cherish jmj education and climb the ladder of success courses offered intermediate all groups degree courses ba bcom bsc and bba pg courses msc ma and mcom career oriented programs multimedia and duty care science courses offered for 10th and 12th dropouts paramedical and healthcare fashion designing certificate courses medical lab technology mlt tailoring and embroidery desktop publishing dtp admissions are in progress please contact sr shaini principal mobile number 9441613054 a warm welcome to dear parents and students jmj college for women i think na na connection ayyo मिगता वाले हलो
என்ன பார்க்க முடியாது நான் பண்ணிட்டேன் Uh, who are you talking to me ah hello ha ah, with yeah, you yeah, yeah. yeah i can hear you <laughs> thank you shashu <Shishu. laughs> sure yeah of course thank you i try to i have to thank you in fact ye ok sare family members sundar pech varda i thought uh, i'm a call right on zoom there are still folks coming in joining okay there are still lots of them are they hanging there what do you think i'm going to call them in this minute ha it is there na hello hello 